a, there's a really a comp, kind of a continuum of farming things here. There's a commercial farm and they have dairy cows, a very beautiful herd of Jersey cows. A couple of other people, and I was one of them, said, well, we'll become cheesemakers. And we did. And that then became the second enterprise. There's a flock of uh, beautiful Icelandic sheep. I mean, people grow all their vegetables and all their root vegetables. And uh, we built a root cellar as a community so we can store things. You know, it's not for everybody <laughs> to put this much effort into sharing, uh, which is really the heart of it, is sharing much more. Uh, and that is so delightful. I had to run, run, steal and kill. What I'm really most intrigued about in terms of living here is how can we translate what we're learning here at, in the community and, and share what we're learning in, with the outside world. So each person in their own community setting can begin to start thinking in terms of how to live more sustainably, how to have a smaller footprint. I'm a farmer for two hours a week. I, I don't have any farm background. I have no gardening background. My father was a farmer, my father was a gardener, but I never kind of picked up on it. And I'm sort of seeing that in my retirement years, I will become more and more of a farmer. And this is my first way of, of getting into it, is helping out with the CSA. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot that was wrong. I don't think you could live any place else and be anywhere near as close to your business partners as we are here. We eat together for common meals, we live together, we make decisions together regarding the community. I see them every day on this property and we check in almost every day. We know a lot about what is going on with our dairy partners. Um, we know the quality of their milk. The reports are posted on the wall in that room. You know, if there's a sick cow, we know about it. If a cow dies, we know about it. And I don't know if you'd have that relationship with, um, if I was buying from a dairy down the street, I wouldn't know that information. Part of the intentionality built into this co-housing community was that it would have a working farm as a piece of it. And so, um, that's really been my role, is to move that piece of the community forward in developing a, a farm and a, a you know, home-based food system right here at Cobb Hill. When I got out of school, I was kind of on a spiritual quest, and I ended up living in a monastic community here in Vermont. The monastic community had a very deep connection to Latin America, Mexico, and Central America, and I had the opportunity to travel quite a bit in Mexico and Central America, and I was so impressed by particularly the indigenous peasant culture in Mexico, just the deep connection to land, almost the uh, worship, you know, worship kind of connection to That really moved me to want to get more connected to land, and at first I thought that I would want to learn how to become a farmer so that I could help do development work in Mexico. But after spending a couple of years as an apprentice on a small farm in the United States, I began to understand more the kind of crisis in agriculture that we have as a society and I began to feel like being part of a positive change in farming and developing small farms again here in the United States was maybe even more important work than my trying to do development work in, in Latin America. some corn oh yeah I hear you're gonna make some do some cooking well I think we're gonna have like a potluck oh but, nice but I'm gonna make like a soup or something for oh, fun. everybody to have and then we'll have whatever else everyone else brings oh exciting <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Katze. Tonight, you belong to me. <laughs> 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 the entire last part. But tonight. 